Hi, what's going on? My name is Gerard Kenneth. I'm originally from Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, born and raised there. Uh, I'm a military vet. Um, yeah, I'm an R&B artist. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. <laughs> I, I grew up going to a Christian non-denominational church. Uh, my mother is Kojic. And um, so there's certain things I didn't per se hear music-wise within gospel music. I didn't really hear a lot. And um, I heard a blend of a lot of like contemporary gospel and gospel and like a smidge of what we probably consider now uh, Christian contemporary music, CCM, right? So there's, there's a CCM and then there's contemporary gospel. And there's a huge difference. As far as my musical journey is concerned, um, I've been singing since I was four years old, singing in church or in school pretty much all of my life. I started songwriting, well, actually writing poetry at like the age of 13. I don't know why, I just started writing poetry. And around like 15 or 16, I, I started producing. And I started recording the first time ever. I was, I think I was about like 17, 16 or 17. And then around like 18-ish, I started like trying to figure this stuff out on my own and record on my own. And uh, I've been doing that for a long time. <laughs> Concerning R&B, and I'm going to talk about R&B specifically, there's no R&B without gospel. Uh, a large majority of R&B artists, independent or mainstream, all come from church or have some sort of um, church background, right? In some shape, form, or fashion. Um, a lot of the ones that are older than me, oh, they definitely grew up in church. And the same thing was me. So I have that blend of, uh, a blend of gospel, um, a blend of, you know, contemporary gospel, a blend of, of what we would call again now, CCM, um, obviously R&B, the way like the older R&B sounds, the new sound, it's a blend of that. Neo soul, neo soul, it's, it's, it's all, all that stuff is still based around gospel, but it's just different, like uh, derivatives of it, so to speak, right? So that's my, that's my sound when you hear me. And then on top of that, I love Latin music. I started learning Spanish when I was like 21, 22, way over 10 years ago. And so I loved that sound. And so you might hear certain either, either in my production or in my writing, because I'm gonna write something in Spanish if I feel like it, right? Or just in a way that I like, just orchestrate my stuff. You're gonna hear different elements of different things. So my sound is just a blend of the things that I grew up listening to, the, the things that I got introduced to, and how essentially what I wanted to, uh, I wanted to do this amalgamation, so to speak, of all those different sounds that I love to where the, when the listener hears it, it's like, okay, well, that's different. I never heard that before. I usually hear this. What's that? And why is he singing like that? Or why is he coming? It's just an amalgamation of all the different things within my 38 years of, of living that I've just like grown to love and appreciate. It's just this huge amalgamation. What inspires me to, to create music? I mean, essentially life. When I was a teacher, I used to tell the kids that Music influences the culture, but it's also a reflection of the culture. And I've said that since like 2015. It influences the culture, but it also reflects the culture. So for me, what inspires me to make music is just, is it from, in my case, it's just life. Um, that's how I got started writing poetry. I don't know, I was just feeling some type of way and just started writing. Sometimes I write things from like my experiences or I write from a perspective of, I wish this would happen. It's just like people writing movies or scripts or something like that. They just have this idea. But again, for me, um, it's just life. Life is what actually inspires me. The good things, the bad things, the, 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 the hindsight. <sighs> yeah, I do. Uh, I, have a, <laughs> I have a plethora of influences. I would say my first influence musically is my mother. Um, I just watch her sing, hear her sing. And um, of course, this is prior to my voice changing at 11. And yeah, that was fun. So I used to have this really high pitch, 
little Mike slash Mariah type of voice because I was a kid and my mom, she's a soprano, so I was just seeing what she's saying. That was my first initial um, influence. Uh, I know my next influences were people like um, you know, Michael Jackson, you know what I'm saying? And even from the gospel, it was so many people. The whole Winans family, I'll just say it like that. If I just say, like, if I say, like, their groups, it'd be too much. Just the entire Winans family. The Clark sisters, the Daryl Coley's. I mean, even the Kurt Franklin's, the Fred Hammonds, right? The commission, commission, you know what I'm saying? These groups, man. Uh, the Billy and the Sarah Gaines, and I think, what's her name? Beverly Crawford, the Larnell Harris. There's not too many people know about some of these people that I'm mentioning, because some of it is, like, you, a lot of people may know about the Winans and the Clark sisters, but if I mention a Billy and Sarah Gaines, you're like, who is that? If I mention uh, a Beverly Crawford, who is that? If I mention a Larnell Harris, who is that? You know what I'm saying? A Crystal Lewis, you know what I'm saying? It's just one of those... It's, it was a blend, like a, like I said before, it's just an amalgamation, but I have so many influences, even down to like your Neo Soul, like your D'Angelo, your your music uh, music soul child, your Ed Robes and Raphael Sadiq. Ah, I don't know where to stop. It's so many influences and specific influences that play a part in like either my production or like my sound, right? And it's just a, oh, it's crazy. So typically, um, when I am creating a song from scratch, it goes a couple of different ways. I usually have a beat in my head or, I'm, you know, I'm just thinking of something. I'm thinking of a, some type of, I don't know, just something that's just in my head. It plays in my head. Sometimes um, I just literally have lyrics. I have lyrics in my head and I'm like, yeah, let me just sing this melody on my phone so I don't forget it, right? And then from that point, I just get started playing the keys or I might start with some type of light drum sequencing just so I can get a feel. Like if, if the drums don't drive me a certain way, I'm like, ah, you know, so I, gotta, I have to feel the percussion a certain way, pause, in order to like move forward. It has to like, just the drums itself has to like push me. And then when I feel that, and how I, the, the idea in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm going to play along with that. That's when I'm actually producing and, put, and, and writing music as far as like the production side. Songwriting, when I'm making a beat or instrumental and then I have to write, it takes me, that process is longer. But if I hear somebody else, like somebody I'm like real cool with, they produce something, I hear it, lyrics come instantly. <laughs> I think... The main reoccurring theme throughout all of my music is having some sort of a solution. We tend to hear songs where it's like, you broke my heart, that's it. Hate your guts. You know, women ain't loyal, men ain't loyal. I got cars, clothes, and all this. You know, but no real solution. That, that's primarily what all of my music is really, like the bottom line is is some sort of a solution, right? At least that's the goal <laughs> that I try to like aim for. It's a healthy solution in reference to having a healthy relationship with your potential or like your current significant other. What can I write to make your relationship stronger? What can I write to make you finally say, okay, I'm going to get over this situation. I'm going to finally take time to heal. You know, and some people don't like solutions, but I'm a man. I want to create a solution. Come through, Lenaki. Well, we'll start like this. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with Troy Taylor, but he is very uh, pivotal for uh, the sound of R&B. He actually got signed when he was younger and it was a bad deal, and he got out of it and went to another label. And um, he ended up becoming like this production group called uh, The Characters. But uh, he played a part in um, uh, shaping Boys to Men, uh, Today, uh, this guy named Brian from uh, Color Me Bad. Um, he's, man, he's worked with uh, Michael and, and Whitney and Patty and Aretha and 
a lot of the newer artists, gospel artists, secular artists, he plays by Trey. He discovered and developed Trey songs. He has this way of pulling things out of people. He has this way of pulling things out to making you the best person you possibly can be as an artist. And I think that's really dope. So I mean, there was a competition a couple of months ago. Basically said, hey, I want to mix the old with the new. I made this beat. Let me see what you can do. And I'm like, I'm going to make this real short and sweet. I'm going to write a verse a hook, and I'm done. And, you know, he picked who he liked the most, or that was pretty much it. And I was like, okay. A couple of us kind of, like, all had, like, the way the vibe was. It was like a, yeah, sure, you need to come through so I can see what's popping with you. Like, we all had that same type of energy with that song. I deliberately was like, I'm not going to listen to anybody else's stuff until... I record, mix, and like master my stuff and then put it out. We're all R&B artists. We're in the same vein. But the only difference was that I was the only one that actually did something in Spanish. So you got come through Venaki. And of course, that doesn't translate deliberate. You know what I'm saying? That's not a verbatim translation. He heard what I did. He's like, bro, that's dope. I was like, thanks, man. I was like, hey. And, uh, I reached out to um, a high school underclassman. I was going to make a beat. And I was like, mm. And let me see what this like, this guy can do. And his name is Mr. Farrell, Michael Pruitt. Hey, man, you like what I did with this? Yeah, I was like, hey, let's do a remix and let's actually put this out. And he was like, all right, bet. And I, I have um, a classmate that I went to college with. Her name is Angel Vernice. She's a singer-songwriter. She graduated from Full Cell as well, but she went to school for uh, music business. So I was like, hey, I want you to get on this track too, but I want you to sing in Spanish with me as well. I walked her through like the phonetics of how I would like her to sing the song uh, on top of the cadence of just being a singer or whatever. And she did really, it's so phenomenal. Everything from what Mr. Farrell did to what I did to what Angel did, just perfect. And um, yeah, that's come through. I think the most challenging part of the song was getting Angel to sing Spanish correctly. That was it. And just getting the cadence right. That was probably like the biggest challenge. And um, she did a phenomenal job. I can't reiterate that enough. Uh, she, sis, did a phenomenal job. And I really appreciate her for that. It's just one of those joints where I would really like to hear this being played in a club again. Like, like just like slow dancing music where you like grab a shorty, whether you're with her or you don't know her and you meet her and you slow. Because I'm from Michigan, man. I'm from the Midwest. It's like, like you either had to know how to sing, you had to know how to spit some game, or you had to know how to dance, slow dance primarily, to get a shorty. One of those three things could potentially help you to get a chick. I wanted to convey that feeling of going to clubs again and dance slow dancing with somebody yo you can meet somebody at a club and be with them for the rest of your life that's a real thing if you ever watch the movie the wood yo my man finally had a crush on this chick and he ended up finally getting with her it was look man he was in love with this girl came from north carolina all the way to la look man watch the wood and it will make sense why i'm trying to make me <laughs> why i want to make a song like this again i'm telling you about creating a solution that's really my big thing but just love and just being around somebody that you like and enjoy and actually want to be with not just for a pocket in time but indefinitely we've all been created for a relationship especially a healthy relationship we were all created for that so this song really uh is trying to convey that from a from a from an intimate and sexual level but the bottom line is being with somebody that you really want to be with and that person wanting to be with you as well not all of us want toxic that's mm. <laughs> the older you get the more you realize that's not that's not the business. Aside from Come Through, um, I am finishing up my project called Love Languages. The bottom line, talking about love, but conveying it in not just English, but in different languages. I speak Spanish. I understand some, some Portuguese. And I speak a little bit of Japanese. Uh, that album, Love Languages, is going to be released October the 21st. The song Come Through is going to be released September 22nd the last day of summer going to what i would love to call cuffing season aka 
fall. Like the setting is just right. The weather cools down a little bit. And it's just one of those feels, you know what I mean? That's a great question. I, I kind of see myself venturing out to other different cultures and either singing or collabing with those type of artists over there. I'm, I was singing in Arabic. It would be dope to meet people that sing in that language. And I sing R&B, but I sing R&B in their language and do their different riffs and runs because those riffs and runs are so dope and unique. But I blend it with R&B. I see myself like working with different artists from like different countries and different cultures. I'm a culture and language lover. And I think it's, it's just really exciting to, to meet those different types of like groups of people, you know what I'm saying? Not just be stuck here in the States. <laughs> Artists that I would like to work with, MJ off top. I think everybody says that. Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder. And this is technically going to like my top five, like, most influential R&B artists, but you know, Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, Usher, uh, Music Soul Child, Tank, Miguel. These are like people that I like. I would like to work, especially with Miguel. He did a couple of joints in like Spanish. I was like, this makes so much sense. I would love to work with this guy. Uh, Kevin Ross, Eric Bellinger. Man, there's so many, gosh, Brandy, Karina Pasian, uh, Monica, I, I, I like mentally call her Cuzzo because her maiden name is Arnold and that's my, that's my last name. Layla Hathaway, what? God, there's so many people. Tiffany Goucher and Davion Ferris. The list goes on. Alex Isley, her. Gwen Bunn. Uh, Aaliyah, if she was still alive, God rest her soul. Uh, in the words of uh, Troy Taylor, he said, Mr. Sir, if you watch that podcast, R&B Money Podcast, you know who I'm talking about, Mr. Sir. I would like to work with that guy. Mario, I would love to work with him. Chris Brown, I would like to work with Chris Brown. That'd be dope. Prince Royce, Romeo Santos, La India, uh, Mark Anthony, Tite Curet, uh, he's he's dead. Uh, Celia Cruz, she's going to. Ismael Rivera, man, do you understand, like... Uh, the wine, any of the whinings, Yolanda Adams, uh, any one of the, uh, the sisters from uh, from Mary Mary, whether it's Erica or Tina, one of them, the list can go on. Yeah, so be on the lookout for Come Through. It's coming out September 22nd, uh, the last day of summer, going into cuffing season. So, yeah, looking forward to y'all listening to that joint. It's your man, Gerard Kenneth. Peace.